joke. Fish in the dam, son. It's a better fish. Ooh, it's a good fish. This is a netter, boys and girls. Oh, look at that. And that is a pretty fish. All right, guys, look at that. Right out of the gate. Oh, that is a dang old pickerel. Oh, it came off. Dang it. All right, we'll get that guy back in the water. Try to get another one. All right, guys, so welcome to today's video where I'll just lay the groundwork for this whole thing. It's going to be a quick one. I uh, had a lot of office time this morning, had a lot of editing time this morning, stuff I had to get done, but I'm in one of my favorite spots in Virginia it's a little reservoir right outside of Stafford and uh, I got here late I forgot that they're only open four days a week so I got two hours and then it's a week before they're open again so we're gonna see if we can't smash some quick bass y'all do me a favor and click on the links in the description box if you're new to the channel watch some of my old videos and if you're not new to the channel share some of my videos for folks that are looking to learn how to kayak fish and learn how to fish in general because I've been sharing a lot of good content hope you guys are enjoying it now let's catch some bass. Fish on. That's a toad, brother. Golly. All right, guys, so before we jump into today's video, I got to thank today's sponsor, the folks from Shimano. Listen, whether you choose the Corrado DC or the X Pride B, Shimano makes something for every style of fishing, for every budget, every price point. Their gear stands up to the test of time. If it stands up to the crap that I put it through, it'll definitely stand up to the stuff that you're gonna put it through. So listen guys, before you head out for your next fishing adventure, and when you get ready to prepare for it, be sure to check out the extensive line of products from the folks at Shimano. All right guys, so here's the, the situation. It's been cold the last three or four days, and overcast and windy as all get out, okay? Today, the day that I decided to catch up on some office work, mostly because it was raining when I got up this morning, the sun comes out, it's 84 degrees right now, and the water temp's up to 69. Now, on the reservoir that I'm on, this time of year, I would prefer to run to the northwest corner and kind of fish the pre-spawn pattern type deal. But, I don't have that much time, I've only got two hours, and I don't want to spend 35 minutes of it in both directions, so, you know, almost half the time just running to the spot and back. So what I'm doing is I'm checking some of these mid-lake coves where there's the potential for resident fish to be laid up. I have already seen one good fish blow up. I know in theory, I probably should eat the time and I should run up. But one of the cool things about these man-made reservoirs, these state managed fisheries, is that a lot of times each pocket or each segment of the lake acts like its own little lake, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing is I'm fishing the spot of the part of the lake that I can get to within the time frame. I'm going to throw a chatterbait so I'm covering a lot of water. I may work a Cinco in here and there to, you know, pinpoint it up into some pockets. And if I want to get right up on the bank, flutter a spinnerbait shallow and, and keep it in the strike zone a little longer, I might do that too. By and large, I'm not going crazy with a lot of different techniques. I'm trying to power fish and cover a lot of water. We've got a warming trend, the wind's laid down, the water temperature's coming up, these fish should be hungry, and I got a lot of grass coming up off the bottom out here further off the bank. So even though I am throwing to the bank, I'm considering the second half of my retrieve to be really the most um, critical to the fish that I think I'm gonna catch. So here we go. All right guys, so look, I am just getting started and I'm already catching fish on the on the chatterbait. I'm gonna get this dude measured. All right, we're gonna get this guy back in the water. Well, first of all, guys, I'm trying to accomplish two things here. One, I am trying to fish and create some great content for y'all, but at the same time, I'm trying to catch my 22 fish for the state of Virginia. And so far, I've caught two right out of the gate now i didn't measure the first one because he was only 10 inches but with this wind busting up on this bank i am seeing a lot of activity and just drifted up in here too shallow oh look at these boils around look at this look at this oh my god there's fish all up in here i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here i'm blowing fish out of here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna basically get out a little further and run parallel and cast over that edge there's a hard edge right alongside there and i'm just going to add a little motor in and kind of ease down this edge running parallel to it letting the wind blow in from this direction 
And I think what's happening is the wind's blowing this warmer water in here. And like I said, I think that this reservoir kind of acts like individual little reservoirs based on the pockets, you know? And so the, the sun setting over there in this corner over here is getting the, the sun the last and it's like 66 degrees. So that front corner was 69, but there was no fish over there. And ironically enough, right over here, there's fish freaking everywhere. Golden Shiner Chatterbait, the main reason that I chose it uh, is their stain. When they're stained to the water, I like gold, uh, both in spinner baits and in chatter baits. So I threw this spinner bait for like 15, 20 minutes and didn't get as much as a sniff. Picked up the chatter bait, started throwing it. And uh, man, I think that it just, is a little bit more thump in this stained water. But one thing I'm starting to figure out is that temperatures that are stable or on the fall, a spinnerbait works better. Temperatures that are on the rise, a chatterbait seems to work better. Now, I'm just kind of early, in the early stages of, of developing that theory and trying to confirm it. But so far, it's kind of one of those things that I'm, you know, putting together in my head is, is it might, there might be something to it. So again, if you got a cold front that comes in and it's causing those, the barometer to you know, go up or to, to be high, then I'm getting a lot more action on the spinnerbait. It stays in the strike zone a little longer. Anytime I'm getting you know, a warming trend or the water temperature's on the way up, I'm getting a lot more action on the chatterbait. So there could be something to it or it could just be you know, isolated incident. I'm changing locations changing fisheries so it could just be a you know a dots that i'm connecting that don't connect but i'm really going to try to work my my butt off to prove or disprove that theory so that i can share it with you guys but i would be interested in hearing your thoughts what are your thoughts on that concept when a front comes in in the spring that makes it colder or when it's just cold in general that spinner bait seems to work a little bit better but as you get that dropping barometer a warm front coming in or a warming trend um you know up to a certain point i think that chatterbait just fires up better uh stained water i seem to be able to catch them on both just depending on the color but i used a gold blade on this river special from accent nothing throw the chatterbait on started getting bit so i'm gonna make a lap i'm hitting this bank but i'm gonna go back down that side over there and down that corner to where that wind seems to be impacting that angled bank instead of the blunt bank and, and i'm pretty sure that's where the fish are going to be but i'm going to make a a run down this entire bank right here and then bust back around but we also do a month long oh fish on hey uh let me call you right back <laughs> all right guys look at that right out of the gate oh that is a dang on pickerel that is a big pickerel son well guys i was doing a little bit of a phone call and then i throw out there and uh this dude smacks it now i've already got my pickerel for the catch 22 whoa for the catch 22 challenge but son that thing fought like a freight train <laughs> so guys look on a lot of days i take the time to experiment and play around today i want to try to develop a theory i want to catch fish for my catch 22 challenge and i've only got a couple of hours so i may go down with the ship here but with the amount of success i've had catching three fish real quick even though one of them was a, a pickerel but catching three fish real quick on this uh, golden shiner chatterbait i'm just gonna wind and grind that thing the rest of the day i don't know how well you guys are going to be able to tell from this video but i'm trying to stay way off of the bank because those fish have been out here off of this edge and you may be able to see it from my shoulder view but i've got a little drop off right here that i'm running right down the edge of and so it's dropping this way and that way so that rounded off secondary point underwater back there maybe the jam but i'm going to keep working on this bank i'm going to keep paying attention but as you notice i'm getting a lot of boulders and rock and grass that's out here 15 20 yards or 50 60 feet off the bank and um i think that's where the fish are going to be i'm catching some small ones up shallow but i think these bigger fish are going to be out here off the bank so i'm going to make this run making cast to the bank i'm going to turn around and go the other way casting about where i'm at casting two where I'm at right now. So it's kind of like cutting the grass, you know, you just kind of do a pattern. So far, I'm digging this uh, Stolquist Pisces. I was originally attracted to it because it came in military green and coyote tan, but it did seem to have a really good layout. And 
So far, I like almost everything about it. I wish the pockets were just a tiny bit bigger. Um, and I just wish it came in 3X. You know, I'm a 2X now, but there was a large portion of my life that I was a 3X. And there's a whole bunch of you knuckleheads out there that are 3X. And uh, just none of the paddle sports companies seem to want to give some love to the big dudes, you know? And so that will be a mandatory requirement for anybody that I partner with in the future. They have to commit to, you know, right size in their PFD offerings. Because, you know, us big dudes need love too. I'm gonna try, you know, several brands. And then the idea is that maybe I find the brand that's the right fit uh, from both a company and product standpoint. Or if it doesn't work out, then down the road, I'll just launch my own PFD company and make my own, you know, OG PFD. You guys comment below and let me know what you think about that concept, you know? Sometimes, you know the old saying, if you, if you want it done right, you have to do it yourself. Maybe that's the option. Maybe that's the angle. Who knows? Okay, here we go. We'll skip it. Oh, boy, look at that skip, huh? You got to, you got to be kidding me. That's a travesty right there. There should have been a fish there. Shame on those fish. But that skip was good though. If you ain't skipping a chatterbait, you are wrong. Hmm. Well, I'm going to ease up about halfway up this dam and see if there's some fish on it. And if I don't catch any fish off this dam, I'm going to go back over there and catch some fish where I was catching them fish before. Oh, there we go. There's a fish on the dam, son. Hey, this is a better fish. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a netter, boys and girls. This is a netter, son. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. On that golden shiner chatterbait, he thumped it. Boy, that is a pretty. Let me get this chatterbait out of his face. First of all, he will appreciate that, but y'all will appreciate a better look. Man, that is a pretty fish. All right, guys, so that fish was a chunk, and man, was it fun. Let's get that dude back in the water and catch another one. All right, guys, so we're just gonna ease up this uh, dam right here and uh, see if we can't catch a damn fish. Ha! See, see what I did? Anyway, I'll shut up now. Let's go catch some fish. So, so far, I don't have a specific pattern into play other than the fact that it's the end the wind's getting blown to. And you guys are very familiar with the theory that the wind blows in the plankton or the stuff that the bait fish feed on, then the bait fish are attracted, attract the bigger fish. What it also does, especially this time of year, when you're coming out of winter into spring, is the surface water, it's the first water warmed by the sun and then if it's blown into a bank that warmer water which is lighter than colder water stacks up on the top so you end up with a warm layer of water up on the surface and that's what really causes fish in my opinion early on to stack up on those banks so if you get the wind blowing into a bank that's already a sun-drenched bank that's already you know a west facing bank so it gets the sun the latest in the day and then you get the wind to blow either directly into it or even hitting it at an angle uh, it's just a recipe for you know early spring uh, and even late winter you know phenomenal fishing so i'm wearing no jacket today got a lightweight shirt i got out of here late uh, but it was pouring down rain this morning and cold and then the front moved out and it just warmed up so uh got a lot of editing caught up got some office stuff done like i've said probably five times down the video um and the feeding time was actually earlier today so i'm in an off peak uh feeding time right at dark i'm gonna fish till the sun goes down uh the reservoir that i'm on now and most of these like state managed reservoirs in virginia uh you have to be off the water at sunset but they also set a time that you've got to be off the water at like 7 30 today which isn't sunset it's actually later than that but i get it it's one of those things and so i'm gonna fish when i can 
do the best I can with the time that I have. And so far, it's been worth it. I've got out here, only had a couple hours to fish. Can't tell you how many times people only have a couple hours to fish and they choose not to. Um, but that could be the day. You know, that could be that one time that you, you don't go. And uh, I can promise you, you will catch zero fish 100% of the time when you don't go. So, go. Go when you can. All right, guys. So, the scenario that I got going on here is I'm catching fish on the bank that the wind's hitting at an angle and the bank that it's hitting head on. And so, I made a lap, fished over by the dam, caught a couple. Now, I'm actually going to do that same loop over again and see if there's any fish that I didn't catch on the way around the first time but in addition to that i got up on that bank a little too close last time before i realized there was a little rise in a flat and i looked down and there was boils everywhere where fish had taken off so this time i'm going to turn a little bit early run parallel to that bank and cast up onto that ledge and see if i can't find some hungry bass out there it looks like they're staging out there um it's only 63 degree water temp, but I think that's mostly surface temp. Just from today's warming trend, I imagine that a little deeper, the water's um, a little colder than that because I don't even have a lot of bucks uh, that have moved up shallow. So I think that those fish are still out. Those females are staging on that drop off and the first cover uh, on that structural change. And so that's what we're gonna be looking for. We're gonna be looking for those fish and we're gonna see if we can't find some some aggressive bigger fish i'm all about numbers right now with the catch 22 challenge but uh as you can tell over there on that dam i did catch a little bit better quality fish and um, i'm gonna try to catch some more of them this uh hard bottom up here that's got this buck brush on it is really looking good I'm in four foot of water right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my turn so that I'm running parallel to it and not getting up too close, especially with the sun in my back and my shadow being long. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna get too close to it. So that's something you gotta keep in mind is your shadow angle. Your shadow's longer underwater than it is on the surface and uh, cast up sun so that the shadow of your lure doesn't get there first and you know oh there's one right there just like that and i'm gonna circle out to the right so i don't blow through fishery fishable waters oh i'm gonna net this to do too he's barely hooked in the lip <laughs> another one I'll circle out right so i don't mess up that spot and uh i'm gonna get this fish measured and get back to fishing they are thumping that chatterbait. Whoa, calm down, little dude. Calm down. All right, we'll get that guy back in the water. Try to get another one. I'm gonna circle back. Like I said, I drifted a little bit, so I did turn so I could go up and out while the while I was doing my measurement thing. And uh, sun's going behind a cloud right now. Actually, this little spin is going to help illustrate that. So what I've got is I've got a bank that curves out right here. And the wind is running directly into it. And man, those fish, so far that's three off that bank. So they seem to be on the bank that has the wind hitting it. Uh, more so than the one with the wind parallel. So we're going to get back in there and see if we can't duplicate that concept yet again. So far, nothing on the parallel bank nothing at all like i said this time when i go around i'm turning short of that bank so i can run down that edge or ledge and not get up on top of those fish and spook them maybe i didn't give it enough time to come back around but i don't have much more time you know if i had a full day i'd leave those fish alone and come back in like two three hours but let's just see if we can get into some that we didn't spook well, that was a pleasant conversation with a law enforcement officer to close the loop on uh, a little run-in on the Chickahominy. What an absolutely amazing day it has turned out to be. It's one of the few days outside of Florida this year that I've been able to get out without a jacket. Uh, it didn't start off that way. It started off kind of rainy and nasty. 
uh, but I got some work done. Looked out the window, the sun was shining. Said, I'm going. Jumped in the truck, drove the quick 30 minutes to this lake right outside of Stafford and uh, got on some fish, man. You cannot beat that. And uh, you know, this is not a endorsement even, it, well, actually it kind of is. One of the cool things about fishing with a motor is it allows you opportunities to get more out of oh there's one right there to get more out of your fishing trip and to catch more fish because for the most part if i thought i had to paddle all the way here today i may have just stayed oh there's a good one hey look at that i may have just stayed home because i didn't have time to get to the fishing spot so you get there faster you go further you're able to catch more fish and uh yeah it's definitely worth the investment let's get a time check real quick and see how much time we got left Sun is going down, and I got to be off the water actually before sunset. 6:37. Got 40 minutes. Well, got 30 minutes with the 10-minute run back to the boat, back to the truck. We could get two more fish today before we got to be out of here. That will be a real good success, really successful outing. Progress towards my catch 22 in Virginia, which will free me up to go hit Maryland and uh, knock two states out while I'm up here. Now, a lot of times a spinner bait will come through pads a lot cleaner, but man, I get some fit, I get some serious wreckage on a bait, on a chatter bait in pads this time of year. Here we go. Another fish. Oh, it came off. Dang it. I could have used that fish. <sighs> head down put my head down and grind when you lose one just realize you're doing 99 percent right the only thing you got wrong is the fight tighten up the fight i was trying to play that fish too easy too much like golly chad stop being stupid stop being stupid stupid don't be stupid stupid god that was one of the two that i needed to make this like the big chunk of my catch 22 that I needed. But I got 20 minutes. 20 minutes and I can wind and grind, baby. 20 minutes. All right, guys, so before we lose light, I want to talk about what I caught these fish on today. I caught them all on a, a golden shiner, 3 8 ounce jackhammer from Z Man. And I paired that up with the Tennessee Shad. Um, I just cut about a, a, a bit, about a quarter of an inch off of the Tennessee Shad Yamamoto Zako uh, in the original tail. Uh, if the water's warmer, I fish that. If the water's a little colder and I want to reel it slower, I'll use the Zako with the, with the paddle tail on it. Uh, but that combination right there produced every single fish today. And you know what, guys? I almost didn't go because I only had a couple of hours. But I took my own advice that I'm about to give you, Okay. If you've only got a couple of hours, go work on a technique. Go work on a, a building confidence in a lure you've never fished before or um, increasing the confidence in one you've caught them on. Go try and explore a new fishery. Go motor around or paddle around looking for places to fish the next time you go. But just like today when I ended up catching you know, several good fish or several fish and one good fish, you just don't know if you don't go. So. Get out there and uh, give them hell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Just don't understand why somebody needs a house that big. That thing's got like 65 windows in it. They could give me that house, and I couldn't afford the cleaning bill, the electricity, and the property taxes. They could just give it to me. I can't imagine that. Now, I gotta say this. When, when my rap career takes off, and I end up with a house like that, you guys call me on my BS and say, man, I remember back when Chad said, it don't make no sense to have a house that big. So, y'all keep me honest, keep me real, keep me, gr keep me grounded, you know what I'm saying? Because whenever the MC had rap career takes off, I'm just gonna have a big fish house. I'm just gonna have a fishing house. Fishing house is not a big house. Y'all know what I'm doing. I'm gonna have a fishing house on like five lakes not one big house on a lake that person's obviously not a fisherman or maybe they got like a house that big on five lakes in which case i need to know what they do for a living
You ever wanted to do that? You ever wanted to knock, just go up and knock on somebody's door and be like, bruh, like, what do you do? Come on, be honest. Excuse me, sir, but can I ask you a question? What do you do? I wonder if they would answer honestly. Man, I sell drugs. <laughs> Legal drugs, you know, like Pfizer, but like I sell drugs. <laughs> I'm not getting into anything political. It's just a joke. Y'all don't go crazy with it. That is a big old house, though. So if you've ever wanted to know what's going on inside my head while I'm fishing, and I got a smirk on my face, now you know. But I only like a tiny little bit. Because I can't say everything that comes in my head outside. Because even though I'm uncancelable, if half the stuff I think I said, people would give it a varsity go. Is that a word? Uncancelable? Un uncancelable. 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 Unable to be canceled. Can canceled. I said canceled. Unable to be canceled. And probably canceled too. Unable. Unable to be canceled. Uncancelable. Yes, and this is exactly how the conversation plays out in my head. That's why I don't sleep much. <laughs>